Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 100,743. I'm your host, Bling Blor, the ruler of Morgon, and joining me this week are the Fun Bunch. That's right, folks. When you've got CPU troubles, just switch the scene, and for some reason that fixes everything. Joining me this week, uh, Karen's here, the wife. Hello. The one and only. I'm um, here. Yeah, and uh, Ian's here too, I guess. By Hello. The wife. Every everything's going wrong, but we're carrying forward. It's local chat. Um, the pre-roll was using twenty-five percent of my CPU, and when I cut over, it went to, down to eight. So I have no idea Jeez. what was happening. Oh, wow! But it was the pre-roll's yeah. fault. Um, also, I, I did say um, during the troubleshooting, your your video was hitching, but it was actually great for your aesthetic. I was like, can we do this all the time? Like, we don't want smooth <laughs> frames from your security <laughs> camera. That's true. That's true. Actually, this is the this is the uh, high eight uh, camera right now. Oh, security cameras uh, up in the corner because this one has the night mode. Uh, and the other nicer camera doesn't have a night night vision mode. It, it's night mode is turning the light on. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> that counts. That counts. Well, I think I I feel like your night mode is just doing green filter and not like an infrared. I so when it's actually dark, there it does a green filter, and then there's an infrared light on the front. And oh, that, that's helpful. Yeah. Uh, that is like for spooky banger. pixel. You were using that. Yeah. Yeah. That looks pretty cool. Um, speaking of, of my aesthetic, I was doing some designing today for Subpixel and I was running it. I was going to run it back through to the CRT and record the CRT to get like yeah. good effects on it. Uh, and that wasn't working. So what I ended up doing was pointing this camera at my computer and that's what I recorded. And it looked, it looked pretty good. It's not bad. Um, I yeah. think I mentioned this before when I was to you, when I was trying to rig up spooky pixel, I was originally going to try to send the PS2 with the HDMI cord. I was going to convert that to the TV in an HDMI splitter. And uh -huh. I unplugged everything because I could smell plastic melting or something yeah. burning. And so I tried to test out the HDMI to RCA converter today and it wouldn't work. Uh, and I wonder if that was the thing oh, I opened up. Why. I opened it up. There was no issues on it. It was booting fine. It just wasn't taking the HDMI connection. So uh, that too led me frames. down. Yeah, too many frames. That led me down the rabbit oh, hole. Oh, you know, of... I wonder. D doesn't the PS2 have DHCP? Oh, Actually, I think it was maybe. too early for DHCP. Yeah. I, I feel like that was a PS3 thing. I I ended up um, today off Amazon for a whopping thirty dollars purchased the like Whoa. really nice converter from hdmi to rca and it has like a wall plug and everything and it's not this shitty plastic thing so um yeah. well gotcha. we'll see how we'll see how that goes um folks we're here to talk about video games we're here to talk about all sorts of things there's no there's nothing in the chit chat section which means we legally cannot chit chat so please do not do that uh, okay. We have been playing uh, video games this week. They exist. They're all around us. They're in us. Um, and soon they're going to be illegal come November. Yeah, uh, that's true. That's <laughs> very true. Uh, wait, I... wait, isn't that... Yeah, both candidates <laughs> have said they will ban video games. Uh, <laughs> so we're screwed I... either way. <laughs> no, I feel like I actually did see something about Trump yesterday saying he would ban violent video games. Yeah, I, he, I think he did I actually like a... did see that. He did like a speech saying he would violent video games. It was the yeah. classic like falling back on the those corrupt the youth, right? Like, let me say the thing. Um, yeah, Jack Thompson joined his campaign. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a historical pool. <laughs> Jack Thompson. Jesus. It was actually um, who's the Dan Maddox Maddox? Is that the oh, Xbox? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Xbox family guy. console. Uh, speaking of family consoles, I played some video games this week. Uh, Spooky Pixel. Uh, was Silent Hill 2 as well as Silent Hill 2. Uh, if you paid three dollars, you could switch me to the other Silent Hill 2 while I was playing, uh, and that got really frustrating because I got right out of the. I got out of playing the original Silent Hill 2. I played a lot of Silent Hill 2 remake, and then right when it was getting good, someone switched me back to the scary part I was in. The other <laughs> game. Uh, and it's that's great. 
it's a nightmare. I think this weekend uh, I'm gonna lower that to a dollar and try to get nice. uh, more people. It, it, it's annoying. It's it's I don't know if it's the timing or whatever, but I feel like some of those streams when we do stuff like that gets a lot of people watching. And there's like it's not a lot of people watching, so no one's paying for anything. So I'm like, ugh. Like it's such a good yeah. idea, but we yeah, just Yeah, so you're at you're at the the my judgment call of yeah, when, when I should come me. in to scare you just to yeah. keep it uh, interesting. But it is fun. I wanna I, I like this this version of Spooky Pixel, so uh I'll keep doing that. It's the Silent Hill 2 original is great and the remake is very pretty. Uh, it's got, as Kyle and I discussed on stream, it has the really annoying TAA smearing that I absolutely hate in video games. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it, Atomic Heart had that really badly. And um, it, that was the thing that made me think my TV was broken for a while. Uh, you know what? I I was watching a TV show today that had the TAA smearing or something like it. I was oh. watching... I was watching the new uh, Gundam Requiem for Vengeance, which is a Netflix CG series uh, because I'm a Gundam fan. And it, it's it's wild because it looks like it looks like a video game cutscene the entire series, because like the engine looks fantastic. The lighting is fantastic. Uh, the particle effects and the smoke effects are great. But all the characters look wonky and they're animated like shit. And then there's <laughs> and then when there's motion, there's smearing. And I, I literally was like, why the fuck are they smearing like that? Like, it's really weird. And then I realized, oh, it's it's just like a video game cutscene. That's weird. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I wonder. But like, theoretically, they don't have to have that because they're not rendering it live. So I wonder if they made the aesthetic choice to keep I, that I think in. It is. To purposely do it like That's that. That's wild. Yeah. I, th I think it's a combination of aesthetic choice plus the whole... I think it's I think it's at 24 frames per second. So it's the whole fucking thing with modern TVs are 60 FPS. They're mm. 60 hertz screens. 60 doesn't divide by 24 evenly. So you get like a stutter. So for a lot of the compression plus the streaming services, it ends up like doing like a weird stutter smear plus whatever aesthetic choice they chose. So, yeah, it's a little frustrating. You need to plug uh, you need to put your OSSC between the streamer and your TV yeah. <laughs> to line that we, up. We gotta get we gotta get Peter Jackson back, right? We just need high frame rate, forty eight FPS on everything. That's what yeah, we need. <laughs> exactly. Those Hobbit movies were great. Um, <laughs> Steam Next Fest is going on this week. Uh, Karen's gonna talk about talk about. She's gonna talk about a couple of demos we played. Um, oh. but one of the demos I played this week. Uh, is you remember Wilmot's warehouse, Ian Gibson? I do. Uh, you've got Wilmot works it out here. Is this the puzzle one? Yes. So, um, Karen, since okay. you probably don't know, Wilmot's warehouse is an indie game that came out a couple years ago. You were a little block man named Wilmot, and you pick up cargo and you're you're organizing it in your warehouse. And the the fun of the game is like coming up with your or own organization system and and sort of all that stuff. I really didn't play uh -huh. much of it. So Wilmot works it out is the same character, but he's at home and he gets puzzles delivered to him. And so oh. you get uh, a bunch of puzzle peaches, peaches, puzzle peaches in a box, <laughs> and they're all butts. <laughs> and you're trying to be like, whose butt is this? Uh, <laughs> but you get enough puzzle pieces to complete one puzzle and a little left over. So you complete one puzzle. Oh. When you complete oh. a puzzle, you put it on your wall, and then you get another package. And it might have the pieces to complete that final puzzle, and then you get a couple more pieces Jesus that'll Christ. divide into more puzzles. That... Oh, so that, they should that make it more interesting. And you, you get you get puzzles yeah. that have incomplete pieces, and then it drives, oh, yeah. and then you have to go back to the other puzzles and pull pieces off to complete that one. Yeah, oh, that um, that happened to me this week when I was putting a whole bunch of IKEA furniture together. <laughs> And they had, it was a Billy bookcase. So they have the system where you put the wooden dowel rods in, mm -hmm. but then it also has the metal studs with the the plastic latch that you kind of screw onto it. And I finished the whole thing, and then I looked down, and there were two extra dowel rods, and I was like, "Those are probably just extras." <laughs> and then I went to the next bookcase, and it did not have extra dowel rods. So somewhere in one of those bookcases is a is a shelf that only has the metal latch and not the wooden dowel rods. And I'm like, it's. It's just for Maggie's China. There's nothing important going up there, you know. <laughs> There's no problem. <laughs> just moved on. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
so it was oh, fun. Boy. It was a cute little demo. It's on Steam Next Fest. It it takes you through like five or six puzzles, which is just the right amount of time when I was like, I don't want to see all these puzzles before the game comes out. Uh, so that was um fun. Uh, and then the game that's been taking up most of my week uh is uh One Dwarf Romantic. Uh, this came oh. out a couple years ago. Um, it was a tech demo for a while, and then it released as a full game. Uh, to the annoyance of people who owned the early access tech demo, they like released a separate game afterwards. Uh, oh, that is kind of shitty. Yeah, it kind of sucks. I don't know how I own it. I assume from some sort of like bundle or itch.io bundle. I, I was gonna say you've played this game before because you've mentioned it on local chat before. Have I mentioned it on local chat before? Chat before? Yeah. Wow. So, so you've previously owned and played this game. That, that That's no judgment. Just that's how you well, own it is that you have bought it. That makes sense uh, because on... It is the, two and a half years old. On the Steam Deck, it, it didn't have me play the tutorial when I booted it up, but on PC it did. So I must have booted it up, played the tutorial, and not played uh, much okay. of it. Uh, but anyways, that game's really fun. Uh, and, and like you get... It's basically Carcassonne, the board game, but hexagons, mm. and it's on a giant map, and you have quests to complete, so it's like, hey, you just put down a hayfield, try to make 15 of these hayfields all connected to each other, one big hayfield, or here's a train track, try to make a 10-length uh-huh. train track. Gotcha. Um, you get extra points for matching up all six corners of a hex with proper six corners of another. Uh, you don't get uh-huh. uh, you don't get negative points the only things you can't connect are like a river to uh like hay or or like rivers and train tracks are the ones that really stop you but you can put a city next to trees it'll show a little red line like you're not getting extra points for this Uh so they don't match but it doesn't like prevent you from doing it so like like i was just thinking you could very you said red line and the cities and i was just thinking of the racist redlining policy and i realized you could make a very (laughs) racist version of this game (laughs) where it's just like how do you zone the city to keep the riffraff out you know what i mean <laughs> like, oh my god it's like gerrymandering congressional district game. yeah gerrymandering <laughs> simulator yeah. it's like the conservatives you know they keep focusing on banning violent video games but if they just started making some really right-wing good video games <laughs> they could indoctrinate a shitload of kids <laughs> in roblox actually in that roblox. is kind of what roblox is <laughs> Uh, did you see the the photos? It was some Ohio. It says, uh, Ohio, question number one, vote no. Stop gerrymandering. And then another sign that says, Ohio, question one, vote yes. Stop gerrymandering. <laughs> it's like, I don't think these people, <laughs> yeah. someone's wrong, unless both of these stop gerrymandering. Um, we'll, yeah, we'll, figure it, funny. we'll figure it out one it's day. It's very funny. Um, oh, boy. I've also been a huge pervert, and I've been playing World of Warcraft. Uh, two weeks in a row of pervert games, I like to call them. Uh, last mm-hmm. week was... Oh, you, I didn't get to tell you. I mean, you probably listened to the episode, but I played that Bandit game. It was super fun. That uh, got to me oh, yeah. where I'm now taking an intro to computer sciences class. Uh, mm-hmm. Like a online class. Uh, and it's, I was it's, like, mostly, um, it's mostly SSH, Linux terminal commands, and then a little bit of bash. At, yeah. at the beginning of Bandit, right? Gotcha. Yeah, and then there's a bunch of other games on that site that I want to get to. Um, oh, like other stuff? Yeah, yeah. So because like, it's... I don't give somebody fuck Linux. All right, if anybody ever tells you to <laughs> install Linux, they're an asshole, right? Like I saw a very right. good tweet, which was somebody who was like, "I installed Linux last week. It was running great, but now my machine won't boot and it won't accept my password." And somebody was like, "Linux is for people that have an infinite amount of time." And it's like <laughs> you choose any other operating system when you don't have time to fuck with it. And that's my feelings towards it. But um what what's it called? Bandit. Uh what? if you go to over the wire. Dot org. Uh, something completely different from Bandit. Gotcha. No, it's That's over the wire. I, just... I I said this all last week. They are these are all rescued games from like old school like chat rooms or something. My God. Um, uh, yeah, they have they have one called Formula One is a war game that has been res- rescued from the demise of Intruded.net. <laughs> yeah, like some of these are like you'll need knowledge of exploitation techniques, programming, engineering, 
all, and so all this stuff, other that, stuff. Is it stuff that was like never officially released or like? It's just like yeah. games programmers made for other programmers. Yeah, so it's, it was basically like, like, like imagine uh, somebody's got a server somewhere and they're like, hey, the server is super easy for you to access. And you just need to like learn how to navigate the system to mm -hmm. get the password and understand which ports are open and things. So they kind of gamified network engineering and how to navigate a remote system and, and set up scripts like that. Yeah, it's like mostly probably for practice. Is the reason you would yeah. do it to like yeah. there's there's yeah, one like i've projects. thought about doing yeah there's one i've really thought about doing which is for sequel um because I, I i don't use as much anymore but i used to use a lot of sequel in my day job because that's what our program uses um and it was basically a murder mystery but all the evidence was in a sequel database so you had to oh. learn how to like properly query and set up tables etc in a sequel database to then get the information you need to solve the murder mystery that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff out there um, for for like weird shit like that. But also World of Warcraft. I've been playing. Um, I don't know if they had this the last time I played, uh, but now they have a time traveling gnome who can send you to play the campaigns of the older uh, expansions. So they're basically like, "Hey, we're gonna set the world state to when that campaign was happening." and yeah. click here and we'll fast track you you'll be at the very beginning of that campaign so i like i got cool. a guy up to level 10 went to the person said i want to do burning crusade because i started back at wrath of the lich king uh and i was like i want to do burning crusade and they're like okay uh we're warping you to the portal all the quests are set like go talk to people as if it's 2006 so that's really nice. neat uh and that game feels a lot better than it uh than it used to uh and, and it's fun uh, it's still super complicated. I opened up my wizard that I had like 50 hours in and I went, I have no idea how to play you anymore. So I just started a new yeah. character. It's, it's, it's I, not I, worth I, it. Yeah, I understand the itch that you're scratching with WoW because I've had that thinking about going back to Final Fantasy 14. Like they've added some new classes. One of the classes is like a, it's like an art mage. So you have to do like artistic strokes to trigger certain spells and there's people like modding their controllers with Wiimotes and things to like actually do it instead oh, wow. of just drawing it on the screen. So I, I've thought about going back. It, it just feels like a like, like you talk about with WoW. It's like a perpetual pool in the background where you're like, I should go do more of that. I should go do more of that. Yeah, it was mostly re I'm reading I'm about halfway through that Blizzard book. And every time they either say Diablo, World of Warcraft or something else, I'm like, oh, I should go like I beat the human campaign in Warcraft three. I should keep, I should do the undead campaign next or like, oh, I should go boot up Diablo two uh, remastered because I have installed. Oh, maybe I should check out Diablo four now that they've supposedly made it better. Uh, even this week I was reading about Diablo three's development and I'm like, I should go play some Diablo three. Diablo three is great. Um, so it's just a yeah. infinite nightmare of every time I read it. I'm like, oh, yeah, video games are great. I want to make video games. I don't know how to make video games. I want to play video games. There's too many video games to play. I'll just yeah. keep reading this book. You know what? Hearing you talk about that, it's it, I'm not getting pulled back to those games because I was never a big fan. I do want to rewatch the Warcraft movie because I remember liking parts of it and being like, especially the orc storyline in that. I was like, this is well done. You know, mm. I've never seen I think it. It's time for a rewatch. It's. It's got its ups and downs. I think overall it's definitely worth watching because when it hits, it hits really well, but it's got some other parts that are just kind of wonky. But I, it's not terrible or anything. I like never, I only like vaguely know about Warcraft lore enough that when I was playing Warcraft 3 earlier this year, I was like, that's Arthas and he's not evil yet. Like, what is this? And then I'm like, oh, okay. But other than that, uh, the other thing that hit me so hard playing Warcraft 3 is how much stuff in World of Warcraft is directly from that game like like um i mean obviously influenced but like icons are directly from that game and voice lines oh, okay. are directly from gotcha. that game sorry yeah no obviously stuff is from that but like like it's the same universe yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's they just copied stuff over like even a quest <laughs> no, i was no, you're doing right, though, yeah last yeah. week the guys the 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 workers voice in warcraft 3 was just on a random npc doing log work and i was like what like they still keep that around today like what 20 years later it's crazy it's crazy yeah 
Uh, so yeah, those are the games I've been playing. Karen, since you haven't spoken yet, um, and yes, it's been great. Uh, let's break that silence and have you talk about the games you've been playing. Sure. So I'm actually going to go in chronological order from <gasps> from oldest to most recent. Um, so I pl- I was playing a couple weeks back, uh, Pokemon Coliseum. Mm. Um, Will ported it onto his Steam Deck, and I grew up playing that game, and I loved it and never beat it. So I said, why don't I just play it on the Steam Deck? And it's really great because on the Steam Deck, you have the, you can save, um, you can have uh, save states, you can play yeah. with the speeds, you know, so it's, uh, I've been playing it at Ooh, 200% helpful. speed. That um, sounds really helpful. <laughs> which is fantastic. Um, but, uh, overall, it's, it, I've been enjoying it not just for nostalgic reasons, but I do really think it is, um, a very interesting story driven Pokemon game and like very mm-hmm. linear Pokemon game, whereas like, the mainline Pokemon games are very like have become more and more open world. Um, it's nice kind of going back to something that's just, you know, has fewer mechanics and is like a pretty straightforward plot line. Um, yeah. A lot of the names and the dialogues are, are just so ridiculous. Um, and like the animations, and the movements are, are silly, but it's it's been pretty fun. Um, and also uh, I pointed out to Will not only does it have, in my opinion, like one of the best soundtracks, but it's got the best um, 3D animations for the mm-hmm. moves and like the representation nice. of the moves. I think they, they look the best in this. Yeah, the music's yeah, that sounds really good. 200%. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Pokemon Coliseum, that, that's a GameCube one? Yes. Okay, gotcha. That yeah, also... well, you're. you're you're going around and you're um you're not actually catching pokemon you are stealing um pokemon that have their hearts artificially closed that they're like they're like shadowy pokemon and you're oh, like Kingdom stealing hearts yeah you're <laughs> stealing them and then you're like Heartless. rehabilitating them and then your pure celebi comes and purifies them um and uh, then I, they're free to learn moves again i did not know watching karen play this I didn't know Pokemon Coliseum like had a campaign. I thought it was just like a arena, Same. like you fight Pokemon in arena, some like Smash Bros style. But there is like a full campaign with like bosses. Yeah, so stuff you can you can yeah. So the 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 main the bulk of the game is the campaign, but you can also have you can create teams and just do like free battles um Mm -hmm. you know freestyle battles or what you could do in the the original gamecube version is you could connect it to your game boy if you had any any gen one through three games and then you could play you could play with With your actual pokemon with your actual team and like simulate a battle that i did not know that so um listen you learn something new every day yeah and then uh in in addition to that, um, I was also playing on the other handheld on the Switch, uh, Steam World Heist Two. Uh-huh. Um, I played through a few years back. I played through Steam World Heist probably like within a week or something. Well, like I was just like I got hooked on it, and that's like I, I just was, played right through. Yeah. It was COVID, right? Probably. Yeah, I think it was like 2019, 2020, or something, something like that. I mean, it's it's not a very long game either Mm -hmm. um but it it was just it's very easy to get into and just kind of keep going um and steam world heist 2 it's a little bit different than the first one i think they're they made it like slightly more open world so you can you you don't have to follow a progression of of levels um and you can kind of build your crew you can hire like essentially mercenaries and that and change classes around so and change weapons around um and this way, like, well, as you build your crew, some levels, like, you'll require, like, you need two people, so you'll use two of your crew mm-hmm. members, and then you've got three left, so then you can, you could do another level that requires three, or you could do one that requires two. Um, the the one thing I am finding, though, is that I don't really care so much about the storyline. I just kind of, like, tap through the dialogue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I always, there's part of me that feels guilty when that happens, but there's part of me that 
likes it when I can just say, no, nah, I don't care about your story. And then it, it makes the games go so much quicker. <laughs> it's like, like Fire Emblem. It feels bad. <laughs> yeah, it feels bad to flip that switch. But when you flip that switch, you're like, OK, things are better now. You know, I could just whoop, get me to the action. Right. You know, you yeah, exactly. And it's hard with turn based games because like you like. It's like you understand, OK, like there is the plot line, but like you tap, tap, tap yeah. through dialogue and then it tells you your objective anyway. So I'm like, OK, great. I kind of understand what I need to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then also, interestingly, the the music is by uh, Bear McCreary. Which is he did uh, he did God of War. Battlestar Galactica. Um, I think he did. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Ooh, that one's good. He's great. And he did, I think he did um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Did he do music for that too? Yeah, I think he's done a lot of. So he's done. So he's done one good game. Stuff. Okay. Yeah, he's done a bunch <laughs> of stuff. Um, but it's it's actually very good at first, but then it kind of gets tiring. Or I'm sorry, I think oh, it does God like a, like see, I I think he did Black Flag or something. It's like very sea shanty ish because you're oh, okay. out on the high seas. Um, but it's not really. It's not so much a parody game. But anyways, it then you realize that he there's only like four songs and then you keep hearing them over and over again man now that you mention it though battlestar galactica is a little bit of sea shanty because it's got the drums and then it's got like chants in a way it's got that yeah. captain of the adama theme music is really good yeah yeah well, i guess it is a naval show but yeah, yeah. But yes, cool. yeah. Belly overall, overall show. enjoying. But like, it's it's what's nice is easy enough to pick up and like play like a mission or two because they're pretty quick. Um, mm -hmm. and playing how, it in how small long, pieces. How long are the missions, like minute wise? Um, like five to ten. Oh, that's great. That sounds yeah, perfect pretty, for a pickup and play. pretty quick. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. And and because and like it is still kind of interesting because you can change around the classes and like eventually you mm -hmm. can get your crew proficient. There's like six different classes and weapons. So it keeps it like somewhat interesting. That's cool. Um, yeah, so that's uh, SteamWorld Heist 2. And then we can get to the meat of it. The game that I've been playing the most recently is Detroit Become Human. Mm -hmm. um, How are you liking it? Uh, I, I like it so far. Um, it actually, it's stressing me out a little bit, which means that <laughs> Some <laughs> I'm, of the like, choices. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we actually, we watched, uh, our favorite streamer, uh, play through a little bit and, or just, just that first, um, mission. Yeah. In the apartment. In yeah. the apartment. Yeah. And like, I started like, I, as I was watching him, I was like, I can't watch this cause I want to play this. You yeah. know, like as soon as I realized it's, you know, like you know, it's yeah. futuristic cyber, but it's also, um, you know, like you're making important choices that like butterfly effect um, type of yeah. thing. But I think it does that. Uh, it does that mechanic very well. Like you fi mm -hmm. strike a balance between like making making choices, but still you're pl you're still playing a game, but you're still making choices, but but not every choice is necessarily like extremely critical yes um and, and it's not clear cut either it's not like oh this is the this is the good playthrough this is the evil playthrough mm -hmm. yes you know? exactly and it, and it definitely seems like their majority of the choices like you can still influence like the events to come you know obviously mm -hmm. like if somebody dies or like you choose to kill someone that's a different story but like like yeah. less extreme decisions like you can still kind of move the needle in you know any direction yeah. you want yeah that game got a lot of shit because of its like subject matter and it, it's a little ham-fisted in ways but i i remember i think i i think i i either rented it from gamefly or i got it for like 10 bucks and i was like i don't know if i'm gonna like this and then i ended up playing the whole thing because it it's it's unique enough and it explores its topics just well enough that you're like, oh, this is interesting. Like, this is different from most video games. Like you're saying, it does the choice as well. And it's bringing up it's bringing up topics and philosophical and ethical and moral discussions that are typically not present in games at all or ham fisted one way or the other in video games. So it, it definitely has its flaws, but people shit talk that game as soon as it was revealed. And it's like, all right, it's not perfect. It can be a little bit ham fisted at times, but it's. It's still unique and well done for what it's trying to do, especially it gets it gets better. 
there's some later missions that happen that are very good and they make the criticism seem even more bullshit once you actually play the game to quote Hideo Kojima you will be ashamed of your words and deeds <laughs> and, and and this one was actually true where it was like oh those critics look like idiots now that I've actually played the game and seen what happened etc it is yes, better I... better I think they're they do it better uh than supermassive and I love supermassive yes. games but supermassive yes. games aren't uh aren't good necessarily they're more like bad horror movies that you just watch because you like the director yeah. like they have the framework it's just their content is just schlock in a way you know yeah like like where i go the, into it's, any... it's the same yeah it's the same it's the same type of game they're just using it to pursue actual worthwhile discussions instead of just horror jump scares and stuff yeah exactly uh, yeah and i think i think super massive for 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 the most part, a lot of the decisions that you make in the games, it's either you get two choices most of the time. Whereas mm -hmm. here, like, you usually you get, like, four choices or the choice to just not do anything. So that's almost a fifth choice. Um, but the, the, my, one, my one ding to um, Detroit Become Human, which might actually be a, a, a positive, was the uh, QTEs are... Yeah. Like they are just so like you have no time to react. I was screaming yeah, during quick. several of them. So um, <laughs> yeah, because I was like, I was like, I need to focus. Um, just like, yeah. And it makes you move the controller. <laughs> like, yeah, you gotta like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you gotta move or you gotta turn the controller and 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 like or like sh um, shift it sideways. Like it's very stressful, but it's it's good because it puts that pressure on you. Yeah. Um, but yes, I, I do like it so far. And I, um, uh, I did enjoy, I think the first time I went back out to the main menu and I was asked by the, uh, you know, the Android, like, oh, can you take a quick survey and like ask like these really philosophical questions? Like, yeah. uh, is there like, a God? Like, <laughs> no, it's like, yeah. would you consider a relationship with an Android? And, um, yeah. Yeah, like, do are you do, are you afraid of uh, like artificial intelligence? Like, do you see it as a threat? And like all these interesting questions. Yeah, that it's funny because I like that too. But that was one of the things that the critics immediately slammed even before the game was out. They like showed some of those questions. And they were like, "Oh, this is fucking like elementary school. These are so dumb." And it's just like, think about the average fucking gamer. <laughs> like, they have never taken a philosophy course. They're probably not even a college graduate. Like, this is the first time they are having to actually think about these like philosophical, moral, ethical questions. And I appreciate that the game is using a format and an aesthetic formula that is typically not has zero of that. It is just point and shoot, and that's it. And they're like, hey, what if we you got to feed them the kindergartner questions? You know, you're not going to give them Kierkegaard right off the bat, you know, so I, I appreciated that. Yes, yeah, so that's that's Detroit Become Human. I'm I'm excited to continue playing the game. Um, and uh, so other than that, most recently, we played a couple of games. Will and I played a couple of games last night. Um, okay. We'll start with a uh, fast food Wait. simulator. Uh, we decided, you know, we're I'm gonna quit my job. Will's gonna quit his part time job, and we're gonna go op open God. a burger joint. Um, <laughs> that sounds like a and nightmare. We're, and we're just gonna make burgers. <laughs> oh boy, uh, um, it's very stressful, and we had a good time. Uh, I drove us to work every day. I don't believe that. Uh, let's yeah. just say. And then uh, someone needs to learn uh, how to properly cook. No, actually, it was. It, it actually wasn't that stressful. Um, but uh, Karen's a very good line cook. Yes, oh, I was. Man. I was flipping burgers. Will was. Will was doing the purchasing. Then we prepped every day. I was flipping burgers. He was taking orders. But then mm. we realized with two people, it very quickly became like an overcooked scenario. Where like yeah. you're just rushing to try, even though they weren't complicated, it was a single single plain burger or a double plain burger, and then they added ketchup, and that's where it got really challenging. We hadn't ordered ketchup. Jeez, I, I'm <laughs> excited for you guys to play uh, Cook Serve Delicious <laughs> too at Extra Life because that game is uh, it's kind of like this, but it's it's incredible the way they do the cooking. 
and it's very stressful, but it also feels very satisfying when you're doing it. Yeah, so I think I think our first day we were down a hundred bucks, but then we quickly turned a profit once we realized. But um, you know, fun fun little quirky simulator game. Uh-huh. I think would would be really funny to do with a whole group of people, um, just to to throw some chaos into the mix. Um, sure. and then after that. <laughs> After a, a few rounds of that, we played uh, pa- Papucom. Papu yeah, what is, is this? A porn? Is this an H game? What is this? This is not my my femboy roommate, an H game. roommate that I really wanted to play. <laughs> um, uh, go ahead, talk about it, Karen. It's it's a it's a two player game, um, where you're it's it's basically like a puzzle, a two player puzzle game, cooperative puzzle game. Um, uh, where okay. where you're these cute little chibi um, characters, and you can and it, it it's got this whole lore that like there's this there's this monster creating these like spores called like uh poppums or some pop pom they're like they look poppers. like little pom poppers. poppers they look like little <laughs> pom poms um and they've invaded the planet you gotta you gotta come you gotta you gotta go through the missions and like you collect little diamond currency and you um it's all like color based um things so like sometimes like we're going on our own little path sometimes like i have to shoot something that will uh, Mm -hmm. like a trampoline for will and then he's got to shoot one for me and sometimes we've got to swap um but it's just like a fun cute little like cooperative puzzle game so this is a steam steam next fest demo is that right yeah, and we didn't even fit it. We played two levels, and it didn't even finish the demo yet. Like we still have so more how, to go. How are you guys playing this? Are you playing this on separate separate machines, or are you playing it uh, split screen on the Steam Deck? Yeah, separate. We did separate yeah machines. separate machines. Uh, but it seemed like you could play two people on one machine. Like all the mm-hmm. UI was like. set up that way. Because yeah, because um, I just realized with the, with the Steam Deck hook it up to a PC, you you could play split screen steam mm-hmm. games pretty easily that way yeah i, I just um, never really yeah. thought about it like that we, we could have sat on the couch with two controllers i bet and been okay with the steam deck um mm-hmm. yeah this was surprisingly really fun it didn't have a ton of like punch you in your face like it wasn't it, nothing of it felt noteworthy other than it was just like a fun platformer to play um, yeah it was like a quick gotcha. little straightforward platformer the villain guy um, was really super creepy uh he's like this gross balloon man uh, oh yeah it was like balloon sonic and the neat thing oh is like God. the enemies would be made out of all these gross bubbles and so there'd be like Ew. one yellow but if i shoot when you shoot at them they absorb the bubbles and get bigger but if it's like three mm. yellow in a row it pops all three so you're like trying to shoot the enemy to get three but sometimes you miss so you accidentally make like this huge enemy and they're like oh god no like let me oh, shoot that pop cool. the bubbles that's cool um, like there was this one snake that it came out of the hole and you could see its whole length of its bob- body was bubbles and karen and i both mm-hmm. shot at it and we kept opposite shooting so we just made a huge long yeah, row of opposite colors which means we have to all oh, of those yeah. have to equal three to pop the whole thing and we we're like oh no yeah so um, then we were taking uh, turns and that was a really cool. fun mechanic that it did like it, it felt unique like you could really screw yourself up if you were just pumping these guys uh <laughs> if you were yeah <laughs> yeah you know what i'll leave it at that jesus <laughs> christ um yeah, Papucom, uh, the demo is on Steam. Check it out. Yes. And then I did want to make just one note about uh I don't I don't think you talked about this because I I don't remember if you did. Um for for Deep Rock Galactic, we played Will got the, the Kickstarter board game a while oh, back. Yeah. And we finally uh a couple weeks ago we finally got to play it with our friends Chris and Vic. And I have to say, it is a very good uh, board game adaptation of a video game. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, it was. Did, we you, did, paint, did you paint the minis? Uh, no, no, we did not. I I think I think Will should make that a, oh. a a project. But it was very cool. We we only did one mission, um, but we were very. It was very cool. They give you a whole booklet with twenty missions and instructions for how to 
create a random mission for yourself oh that's nice that's cool that sounds like and, fun and a lot of the mechanics that you normally find in the game like they kind of translated it into like an easier way to do it in in a board game since not everything translates but it was very fun that's cool yeah. that's cool it was, it was it was it transferred it a lot better than that dark souls board game i'll tell you tell yes you it was like i was like well, wow i, I mean Somebody that's not a big Dark Souls fan, I definitely felt the same level of frustration. <laughs> As someone who is a Dark Souls fan, I that's felt fair. more frustration. God, that game's uh, bullshit. Yeah. And I would say it was better than that Stardew Valley board game as well. That, that one was no, okay. No, that Stardew but... Valley game was pretty good. No, but I, that's why that's, this is a high bar then. Because that Dark, dark Rock... Aren't you, aren't you bring it on down? Bring the on Deep down? Rock was very good. Yeah. Bring it on down? It was very fun. I'll kill you um speaking of very good uh opposite ian gibson puts the news together every week uh he does that's it that's right for minimum wage he didn't wage. talk about his games yeah you oh he didn't talk about asshole. his game oh yeah, sorry you piece of <laughs> sorry. shit <laughs> sorry well, ian hasn't sorry. played any games this week yeah, yeah. the funny thing was that, that was a really good intro because you said speaking of good things and then the opposite yeah and folks i did play some call of duty modern warfare 2 this week so i actually don't know which call of duty i played because i don't know if you've noticed this but if you try and if you try and play call of duty any recent call of duty in steam now it's through a single copy called call of duty <laughs> so you launch call of duty and it puts you into this big fucking ugly launcher that has all these options where it's like do you want to play warzone do you want to play multiplayer do you want to play modern warfare 1 modern warfare 2 black ops 5 ghost like it just throws all these fucking options at you but it doesn't mean you can play any of those you can only play the ones you've purchased and so literally i'm trying to remember when we were playing a lot of dmz dmz was that modern warfare 2 or modern warfare 3 i literally can't remember and uh... i happened to purchase that game that was Modern Warfare 1, I, I want to say. Modern no. Warfare 3 Mo just Warzone. came out last year. Warzone was Warzone was Modern Warfare 1. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so what maybe it was DMZ? Modern Warfare 2. I think it was 2. Yeah, maybe Modern Warfare 2. It's just so frustrating because, like, I knew I purchased that game. I've been playing a lot of Arma shooters, and I was like, I want to play some more shooters to get my shooting skills back up. And I knew I had purchased that game and it was so frustrating just finding that in my Steam library and then opening the game, having to go through all these fucking battle pass season things where they're like, look at this, look at that. Having to go through just a fucking obnoxious menu of all these options when all I want to do is play the campaign for a single Call of Duty game that I have purchased, you know, and it just made it so frustrating. So anyways, I played the first mission of that game and. um. Call of Duty sucks, great. man. Uh, have you guys played any Call of Duty campaigns recently? No, I mean I played the mo the first Modern Warfare, like the re re remake uh, wa okay, Modern Warfare yeah. One campaign that was decent. Yeah, um, I think the last one I played was. Did you play Cold War? But anyways, I did play Cold War, and that was okay. But they've they've made it so cinematic. Like it's always been like this, but they made it so cinematic that it just feels like everything is contrived you're walking through and it's like i'm in this mission zone with like 10 houses and whatever but i can't actually do anything because i just have to walk this specific direction with my team i have to go to this door that my teammates waiting for to trigger the enemy to then trigger like there was even this moment where i'm like walking through a hallway and an enemy pops out of a door and i unload in him and he doesn't die because my teammate is supposed to come up and cinematically stealth kill him with a knife. And I was uh. like, this is fucking dumb. Right. Mm. And so it just did not feel good. And it sucks because like when I was shooting guys, the actual shooting of guys in Call of Duty still feels good. They've just emphasized so much the cinematics around it. That it's like it's it's just not fun to play that game anymore unless you're like, oh, you yeah, give me that zero dark 30. Like I care about Ghost and Soap McTavish. And I'm like. Well, when did these guys become like major fucking characters? Like, who gives a Goobers. shit? It's just like mm -hmm. tryhard kids. Yeah, it's tryhard Milsim goobers. Like, <laughs> play some fucking Arma, you nerds. Uh, anyway, <laughs> and then and then, guys, I couldn't even quit the game. Oh, so no. I, so I quit the mission. Right? I like I hit I finish the first mission, go to the second mission, I hit escape, and I'm like quit to main menu, and it pops this this loading screen and it's like trying it's like trying to connect to server 
And I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? I have an internet connection. I'm playing the campaign. I have an internet connection. Like just to get me back to the main menu. And then there's a, there's a quit button. So I click the quit button and it just like refreshes that page. And then it's just like trying to connect to servers to quit me out of a campaign mission back to the main menu. I had to alt F for the game. I had to force <laughs> quit it. It's so fucking dumb what they have done to this series. Uh, but anyways, um, there is another game I played this week. Um, I have been playing UFO 50 on a handheld device. <gasps> Will, can you guess what the handheld device is? Oh, I, 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 I'm guessing you didn't buy a Steam Deck. I almost did. I did not buy a Steam oh, Deck. Oh, did you buy a um, rogue, rogue Ally? No, I thought about that as well. I tell you what, as soon as that f the the Steam OS is coming to the ROG Ally because they're doing driver updates, they just haven't launched it yet. As soon as they do that, I may pick up one of those because those things are much more powerful than the Steam Deck. No, I've been playing UFO 50 on my $30 R35S. What? <laughs> yes. So I, I didn't want to buy UFO 50 because I really want to play it handheld. And it's only on the PC right now and I don't have a Steam Deck. Um, but then somebody on Twitch was on uh, somebody on Twitter was like, oh, hey, by the way, uh, UFO 50 is part of Portmaster now and you can play it on handheld uh, devices running like Garlic OS or Onion OS. And I was like, wait a minute, I have a thirty dollar little Game Boy <laughs> color handheld. <laughs> so I, it took me like 45 minutes to set it up because you do have to buy the Steam game and then you got to put it on the SD card and then you put a port file and then you launch the game. And the first time you launch it, it spends like 30 minutes like like compressing and converting a lot of the files so they're they run better on the the linux android device oh sorry not android just the, the bare bones linux device and i played a little bit of it unfortunately on on this device which i think has one gigabyte of ram it's a little bit too slow so that that first game what's it called barbuda yeah barbiturates yeah the first game <laughs> it's a you're walking slow in that game it runs at like 75 percent speed on the handheld and i was like so so some of the like turn-based games are fine i can play on there but if it's any sort of like platformer it's a little bit too slow but then i was like wait a minute i have another handheld device which is my retroid pocket flip i think that's what this is called this has <laughs> steam link on it this has steam link so i've been playing it on this and it just streams 128720 yeah. to this. And like it's I've played it probably for like two hours now. And I've only had literally only two instances where I could tell it was streaming because it would hitch for a, like a microsecond. The rest of the time over my local Wi-Fi to my gaming PC, it's completely solid. So I, mm. I so I have UFO 50 basically on a portable device um, and I've been really enjoying it. I've only played the first 10 or 11 games now. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to some of them that I really enjoyed. Magic Garden, which is kind of the like, how would you describe that? It's like a centipede meets uh, worm, not snake. snake. It's like it's like snake plus centipede. Yeah. Um, the uh, a tactics, which is like a, it's not a turn based. It's like a real time timer based chess stratego game. Is pretty cool. Game stresses me I, out. It, yeah, it stresses me too much out. I really enjoyed it, but I can't play it too much. Uh, Devolution, which is basically you're you're spending you spend like 20 minutes setting up complex chain reactions just to fire it off and then watch it go. And that's really cool. And then the, the one that I that I ended on because I haven't played it in a couple of days is I Avianos. You remember that one? The Bird War one? Oh, where yeah. You're like I spent like an hour playing that game, which is far more than I played any of the others. Basically, you're like. You're setting up, it's a grid, so it's like a five by five grid, and you have castles, and you start in one square, and it's it's actually, it's a lot like a board game. It's a lot like uh, Caverna or Agricola, where if you remember in those board games, at the start of your turn, you pick a series of actions. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the same amount of actions or the same type of actions every turn. You say, hey, this turn I'm going to do these three actions. So the way it works is that every turn you have three gods that you can pray to. And each god comes with three actions. 
and one of the actions is like move so when you do the move action you can move your units then there's like cultivate which is where you can use your existing resources to like gain more currency or you can recruit which is where you turn the currency into soldiers or you can build so there's like there's probably like five or six different actions but they're arranged differently according to the gods and then the, the gods change as well like you don't have the same gods that you can pray to each turn so so you have to kind of pick from a limited set of actions each turn to then slowly take over the map and then it's an auto battler when you do have conflict over a tile it's an auto battler depending on defense and your and your units there's like four or five different unit types and i played two matches of that really enjoyed it that one's really cool so i'm i'm excited i'm literally only i'm looking at the list i am 12 games into the 50 games um and i'm going in quote unquote chronological order and so it's it's really fun to play it's also kind of a slow burn because i feel no pressure to burn through it so it's just like whenever i want to i sit down and i play i pick a game and i play it for 10 15 minutes ufo 50 fantastic game so far it's um, really good there's one yeah. uh i've been playing the idol game a lot so I like log yeah. into it, do the stuff, and then leave. Um, that yep. one's really fun. And then the other one is I've that, been playing is that Pilot Quest. Pilot Quest, yeah, I think so. The other one I've been playing a lot, which I do not remember the name of, and you'll—it's the last one on the second row. And you were this little, I guess, artillery Warp vehicle tank. that can only shoot up, or you can only shoot yeah. parallel, um, or sorry, perpendicular. Uh, but when you hit the A button, you you launch to the other wall. So you were solving puzzles by like launching and figuring out where you can oh, launch. And there's turns and everything. That's and I've, cool. I've gotten a few like I, I, they're not worlds, but like screens of levels in. And that's the one I've been uh -huh. playing a lot of. Uh, there's like three. I've played most of them. There's like three or four games I haven't that are still has dust on them that I haven't touched. But uh, yeah, uh, it's it's a it's it's great it's very good it's really really good i will say it. um my gaming selection this week has been a little eclectic because there's only there's one game that i really 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 want to play i've been doing a lot of research and reading and analysis and planning and thinking but i can't play it yet do you know what i'm talking about will you are talking about the new Madden. It's coming out, folks. He's really excited. It's been, it's been, out, for, <laughs> been out for months. Damn. Will. Factorio Space Age comes out on Monday, oh. which also includes Ooh. not just the DLC Space Age, but also 2.0. And I've been looking at it and watching some videos. They did something really cool where they've had a lot of play tests and, and a lot of members of the community and a lot of YouTubers have had the game for months now. Part of it is play testing, but also it... it all these YouTube videos that come out recently where they're like, hey, I've played 50 hours. Here's what's new. Here's what's different. And I've been watching those videos and there's a shitload of differences in this game, even outside the DLC, just like quality of life stuff. He put like a Wikipedia in the game and and Ooh. I'm super, I'm super fucking excited. I may even take off work on Tuesday just Ooh. to play more Factoria. Like I am, th that's the state I'm in where I just, I don't want to play anything else no matter how good it is. Which is why UFO 50 is perfect because I could pick it up and play it for 15 minutes and put it down because I, I just want to play Factorio on Monday. Can't wait. I, I so uh, that you're the DLC, you're like on an asteroid now, but you can, there's new planets you can go to and like harvest yeah, three stuff. new planets, I believe. Yes. So do you and, like and stop at the planet and then go back onto the asteroid? I, I think so. Um, but I think you can also set up bases on them. So, that, so, so if you have multiple planets, you can, you know, then travel between the planets, but they've done some dev diaries recently where like one of the planets is all about like biological material. So it doesn't have basic resources, but it has like trees. So it's like, you have to take this tree and then put it into like a bio smelter to turn it into iron ore to then turn it into iron plate. So like each of the, there's one that's just very hot and very fiery. So every, every machine now needs like cooling and cooling fluid. So, um, and then, and then even just in the base planet, they basically brought the rocket ship a lot earlier in the tech tree is the way they talk about it. So that way you can, you don't have to do a full playthrough of Factorio just to get to space and then to the space age. And then even if you don't want the DLC, the, the 2.0 has like a whole bunch of enhancements, quality of life, new stuff in it. So I'm I'm super excited um, to start a brand new 
play through and I'm looking up tips because I've I've beaten Factorio two or three times now, but it's been a while. I've been waiting for this. Um, I'm super excited. Are you gonna start like on the asteroid? Is is that's a that's a new thing, right? No, I don't. I mean, that may be one of the scenarios, but uh, reading into it, people recommended just start a normal game. You'll reach the rocket earlier because you do want your main base set up because then when you get to the asteroid, it's not fully built out and you also have a spaceship you need to build. Uh, so you want gotcha. you, you want to have a solid base to like constantly feed it rocket parts and engines to help you upgrade the asteroid. OK, maybe I'll finally beat Factorio. Uh, uh, it'll be it'll be easier to get you to rocket now if you want to consider that your your beat condition no you know? i wouldn't consider that my beat condition we will i'm i decided my first playthrough of the space age is going to be solo but we will at some point have to spin up a server and you me and zach and whoever else wants to join do a nice factorio multiplayer yeah man there's that there that uh planet crafter dlc came out and i was very tempted yep. to check that out and then that game that combines satisfactory and planet crafter just came out in early access and i'm yeah. like what the fuck that looks that looks like a cash grab though that looks like somebody was just like let's just copy these games oh you know? but it looks I don't know great that one. It, it, like that's a cash grab that i will i will hmm. schlock i will grab. Go see i'll grab that cash grab it uh speaking of grabbing Ian, how's the news? Hi. Um, guys, we did have an Xbox Fall Partner Showcase today. Any of you guys watch this or see the news out of it? I think Karen watched Ooh, it. Oh, no. I, nope. did, I did watch it on mute um, while I was at work. I'll hit the highlights. Subnautica 4. I'm sorry, Subnautica 2. <laughs> <laughs> Skip 2 and 3. Wow. Damn. For some reason, I looked at that and just went, Subnautica 4. Um... They said Subnautica 2 debuted, but I feel like they already said they were making a sequel. Um, so I don't think this is necessarily a surprise, but they showed a lot of stuff here. Subnautica, you guys ever played the, the first one? Uh, yes. I haven't. I think Will. Yeah, you have, Will. I, I yeah, think it was good. It, it was scary. I'm very scared of the ocean, so I didn't beat it. But I did do the I did enable a mod that like turned off hunger and oxygen tanks which made it a little bit more enjoyable because it's it has a lot of good export exploration elements in it. Uh, we also got a look at FBC Firebreak, which is a three player co-op FPS from Remedy in the control universe. The thing Ooh. I couldn't quite tell, and I don't know if they clarified this, it it does look like it it is mission based, but they are doing a little bit of a software or games as a service thing where they said they're going to keep adding content after the game is released. So it's kind of a combination between a you're paying for this and you get a set amount of missions a la Left for Dead, but they're going to try and keep adding content to it. It's a little weird as to is this a single purchase of games as a service, but uh, it looked pretty good. What, what did you guys think of this one? I think it. I think it looks neat. I think it definitely left for dead vibes. I saw FBC. I saw I didn't yes. watch the show. I just saw it afterwards. I kept thinking, is this like football club? Like, what is this fire break? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is this? And I was like, oh, like, yeah. I feel like there's a better, better yeah, and acronym or something. But and mm. the other thing was, I, I was watching this intermittently. So I don't I don't know when they I think they revealed that it was control related at the start and I missed it. And I kept looking at it and just being like, oh, it's another generic hero shooter. Oh, it's another generic co-op shooter, right? Like, I don't think there's anything about this that looks great. There's nothing about this that looks awful, but they're entering a pretty crowded space. And the only thing they have going for them is that it's in the control universe. So a little worried about this one, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, like a dragon pirate Yakuza in Hawaii. So this oh, is going to be... Goodness. This one, I you know, this is action. It's not RPG. It's uh, we talked about black sales earlier. This has got a lot of a lot of black sales elements to it. What, what are you guys thinking about this one? I mean, just from just from watching, I think both you and Ian, I mean, you and Will play through various Yakuza games. And recently Will was playing the like a dragon. Mm -hmm. um, it's this just seems very like. Like, like they're taking kind of a, of a risk, like a, a little a, a pivot of genre. Um, yeah. And I mean, I, I feel like it could be very like raunchy and over the top and like 
they'll do they'll do it really well or, or and like not take themselves too seriously um or it'll be like a total flop yeah I've, i i'm pretty sure they're gonna do it well because a lot of their games are full of things like this like they had a pokemon snap in 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 the recent one where it's just like it's a throwaway mini game but it's actually a pretty good pokemon snap you know I honestly, mm -hmm. my biggest problem with this and why I won't be playing it is I know for sure this is going to be a, like a 40 hour game. They do not make quick games. They do mm -hmm. not make short games. And I just that's going to be too much for me. But it does look like a lot of fun. Are you thinking about uh, picking this one up? Will? yeah, I'm sorry. I'm watching the trailer. They're like fighting monkeys and the, the yeah. ships drive. They, they the ships drive like they're model ships in a pond. Like it looks like yeah. like the perspective is weird. Like. It's, I love Majima, so, and the last time I saw him, he dressed in a suit and had an eye patch, or had his ponytail back, except at the end of that game, he goes crazy. Um, oh, yeah, he's got an yeah. electric guitar. He's, like, so this, wailing on the violin looks, and then wailing on the guitar. Yeah, this could be fun. <sighs> this, yeah, this looks like fun. I'm still playing slowly um, Yakuza Like a Dragon, and that is super fun. Uh, I need to get back to it. I had a little, you know, when you get what Carl talked about this when he was on, but you get those weeks where you're just like, I don't want to play. I don't know what to play. And so I've been playing yeah. a lot of UFO 50 and Dorf Romantic uh, and Balatro. So um, I'm excited yeah. for, for games. This looks good. Also yeah. weird. Um, I'll hit. I'll hit some of these real quick. So we got uh, another uh, trailer for Mouse PI, which is the uh, black and white early Mickey Mouse game oh um, yes i remember seeing something they, they released a trailer yeah. like uh, a while back yeah they, they've they had a couple they were they're always tent they were always tentative and teasing it because they couldn't say it was mickey mouse and honestly i'm not sure if they actually do it but now with public domain rights they actually can say it's mickey mouse i don't know if they go that far yeah, but th this i'm but, excited for looks like bioshock um, We've also got uh, Alan Wake 2 DLC coming out, and we've got Kronos from Bloober Team, which is a new IP. Uh, Bloober oh. Team's this this feels like the perfect time for them to announce this because they just did Silent Hill 2 remake. Everybody expected it to be bad. Turns out it's incredible, and then they're like, "Great, here's here's what we're doing next. New IP. Uh, looks like a little bit of Dead Space uh, combined with horror. Well, more mm. horror, I would say, slower horror." um so yeah a lot of good stuff from this partner showcase uh stuff for everybody they even got some anime crap in here um but folks the biggest announcement this week was outside of the xbox fall partner will what are you doing in 2027 um you know i'm hopefully if uh you give me a straight Didn't answer, I... or you or the? I I mean, probably answer. dead when the nukes go off. <laughs> I'm gonna be uh, campaigning for uh, Donald Trump fourth time. He's gonna lose this year. <laughs> 2028. It's gonna be a good year for him. Uh, no, folks, we're gonna be playing Arma Four. Uh, so I'm excited. We have a date here. If you're not familiar with it, basically a year and a half ago they announced and released Arma Reforger, where they said, "Hey, this is." Armor Forger is a is a game in our new engine. It's bare bones. We're putting this out there so that we can work and release on the engine and let the community have fun in the engine and mod for the engine. This is the engine we're going to use in Arma 4, but it's not Arma 4, the game. And we've been having a lot of fun in Armor Forger. It's a great engine. Uh, they're making a lot of improvements and enhancements to it. Arma 4 is going to be where they bring out their big, probably some sort of single player campaign, a lot of built in stuff, a lot of mod community support. So I'm I'm excited for this. I'm almost looking at Arma 4 not as a new game, but it's just like they have announced a giant DLC for Arma Reforger several years in advance. That's that's the way I'm thinking about it. You, you excited for this, Will? I'm very excited. Uh, it feels very far away, but I know as soon as it comes out, we're going to be like that. That I feel like they just announced it. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to like. I've tried to do Arma 3's campaigns and stuff like that, and I think Arma 4, I'll be like, oh, let's let's like the three of us hop on and do the co-op campaign or and stuff like that. Like I, I, I'm excited for this game yeah. to finally have the tools that Arma 3 had for for uh 
creators and 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 missions yeah. and stuff like that so that'll be fun and i'm just thinking it's armor reforger plus three years of roadmap from bohemia interactive so like they've talked about how they want to add boats they want to add mortar and artillery systems so you have all those enhancements on top of armor reforger plus three years of the community releasing maps releasing units releasing new modes new weapons new vehicles things like that so this is Arma 4 is really just going to be like Arma Reforger Master Edition. It's going to be great. Hell yeah. Um, you guys seen this Pokemon leak from Game Freak and all the stuff in it? I was reading about it earlier. Pokemon fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the short of it is somebody has terabytes of information that they got from Game Freak and they are slowly releasing it, kind of doing it gen by gen in a way. Oh. It's uh, the way it's it's talked about is it's everything. So it's source code for the games. It's concept art. It's design documents. Like so there's stuff about, you know, hey, for this gym boss, we want them to be like J-Lo. They should be a sexy Latina woman and like like notes to the artist, notes to the to the copywriters, etc. Uh, there's a couple things in here that are for the non Pokemon freaks. Cause there's a lot of, if you're a Pokemon freak, you're just like jerking off to this all day. Cause every single little detail, you're like, Ugh! we don't care about that. But apparently the, the switch to code name is ounce, which is a terrible code name. Uh, also apparently it will have the same ROM format as the switch one, which makes you think that they're just going to have the same cartridge format as the Switch one, possibly for the Switch 2. Um, there's been a couple games uh, that have been teased, I including a potential PvP or MMO game. Uh, there's some material on uh, a sequel to the, uh, what's it called? Pikachu Detective uh, mm -hmm. live action Detective movie. Pikachu. Mm. Yeah, a live action series at Netflix, which we knew was kind of happening, but some details around that, um, some new gens. So if you're a Pokemon freak, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah. Come on. Take a look at all this material that you can see. There's some really crazy lore documents where they're like, here are the gods of the Pokemon universe and where they came from and what the constellation of gods looks like. So it's actually it's one of those things where. Uh, it sucks that they got hacked, but it's also like really cool if i was a pokemon fan like yeah i want to see those lore documents from two decades ago where they you know have the concept art for gen 3 and like what did what did articuno look like in its mm -hmm. first version you know so it's it's a lot of stuff that i'm not saying they haven't released this stuff before or they're not releasing behind the scenes stuff but there's a lot of stuff in here that is not compromising to them in any way and I would have loved to have seen in like an official art book or behind the scenes book type of thing so mm -hmm. lots of cool stuff in here um, you guys remember Waypoint from Vice, the gaming website from Patrick Klepek and Austin Walker? I do. Yeah. Um, I guess what? It's back. Um, this is a really fucked up story. So basically Waypoint, um, was shut down by Vice in 2023. They laid off hundreds of employees, including the people at Waypoint and uh, according to the people at who left Waypoint, they were never even fully paid their severance from that wow. layoff. A lot of those people went on to make Remap Radio. Uh, Waypoint was just completely abandoned as a brand under Vice. Vice was then shuffled around and sold to some other companies. And now this week it has come back. Uh, Vice.com, basically, they basically just said, hey, Waypoint's back. And they started posting some really shitty SEO articles and there's even uh, the new managing editor, Dwayne Jenkins, uh, writes this really kind of weird statement in, in a, uh, an editorial where he says, quote, what I want Waypoint to be is simple, a home for creatives and writers to talk about everything in this troubled, crazy industry we love and entertain you guys along the way. Uh, but I also adore gaming and cherish what Waypoint represented to believe I can lead the change in making this real, something chaotic without being crass, critical without being cruel, ambitious without being arrogant, end quote. Um, I, I mean, I, I had my problems with waypoint as well, but it feels like a really bad fucking move to take a brand from industry darlings who were laid off, not fully paid their severance. They launched this brand. It was completely killed off. And then a year later, come back and try and resurrect it from the dead for a shitty company. 
this just feels feels bad in the mouth. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it just seems kind of important. I mean, it'd be it would be different if they kind of brought it back with with a uh, a new format or a different perspective or, yeah. you know, like a, a rebranding of itself. But it seems like they're just trying to do the same thing, but in a worse way. Yeah. And, and it's crazy because Waypoint was Waypoint was not Kotaku, right? It was not the Wall Street Journal. It was not a website for news. It was a very much personality driven website. You know, they would have guest writers and things on and they would do some news coverage, but it was all about the podcast. It was about the streams. It's a lot like Subpixel where like we're making content that only we could make because it stars us and our interest in our way of making things right. Like we're making creative content here. And that's a lot of what Waypoint was doing. Um, you can't just bring that back without yeah. having any of the same people there. Uh, it's it's wild. And it's it feels like Vice was like, oh, we have this brand. This brand has some recognition. Let's just bring the brand back without doing any sort of investigation into what that brand meant. And can you actually bring that back? You know, it's one thing if they brought people back and rehired them. That's not what this is. This is this is a zombie waypoint. So if you see articles from Waypoint from Vice, new articles, uh, fuck them. Don't give them the clicks. I was going to say, this feels like those crypto guys who revived Flappy, who bought the Flappy Bird uh, yeah. IP <laughs> just to sell crypto. Uh, very yeah. It feels like that. Um, Will, tell me about the 3D analog. Is that what it's called? Or the analog 3? Is it just called analog the 3D? 3D what, what guys, the analog 3D. Analog 3D. They announced oh, it last wow. year. Uh, and now there's a launch pre-order date and pricing. Uh, it is uh, from Analog, the makers of the Analog Pocket. Uh, this will be a device that plays N64 games, Ooh. FPGA engineered, 4K resolution, which is 10 times the resolution of the original N64. Uh, it's 100% compatible with every original N64 game, region-free Bluetooth. Uh, it takes the plug ports for the uh, original controllers. Um, it looks freaking sweet. Uh, I love the N64. It is probably one of my favorite consoles, uh, and that's 100% nostalgia, uh, except for the 100% where it is one of the best consoles. Uh, it'll also have multiplayer, includes multiplayer support. Uh, sorry, I should say. Uh, and they're they're partnering with 8-Bit Doe to make a what essentially looks like a pro Nintendo Pro controller for the Switch. But it is a Nintendo 64 controller with the buttons. Yeah, how do you uh, real, real quick? How do you feel about that? That's like interesting. How do you feel about, it's so, so just to say, people at home, like Will saying, it's basically the exact same format as a Switch Pro controller, but it has buttons that match the N64 mm -hmm. um, on the right hand side, but it doesn't have the middle stick or grip or anything like that. So it's like they're doing a modern controller format but they've tweaked the buttons to match the N64 buttons. I, I would love to get my hands on it to see how it feels. I, I understand they can't make a modern controller because it wouldn't map prop. Like you want a controller that maps to the, since this is a device that should only be playing <laughs> N64 video games, you want a controller that yeah. is, is that controller. And, and, and I think that is great. Um, but this also, this, like all other FPGA and analog consoles, this will eventually be able to play anything that can run on those FPGAs. Yes. Yeah. And so I, I think buying this controller would be a little bit weird unless you're only going to be playing N64 games um, and don't own an N64 controller, because why wouldn't you just buy that? Because it's probably cheaper. But um, I do think it's interesting that they went with this, and I think it's cool to see a modern controller that is forced to have the buttons of an N64 yeah. controller. And, and I think, I think that's cool. Yeah. I don't hate it. I mean, if anything, it looks like if it just looks like it, if you think about it as a, a modern day N64 controller, like some, like cr applying the aesthetics of modern day controllers to the N64 mm -hmm. rather than, you know, something to replace it. It might just be more of a preference thing to the user gotcha so i'm the odd man out here where i hate it because for me 
like the reason this exists is to have a wireless N64 controller for your N64 console, right? And if you're going to do that, it needs to be the same format as the N64. That the the Nintendo N64 online controller that they released, that's wireless, right? Yeah. I ha- I have that in its yeah. box still. Yeah. So there there may be some legal concerns there, etc., but I would expect it to be exactly like that. You know, I'm not saying the N64 controller is perfect, but if you're buying a modern N64 console, you should have an N64 controller that is exactly like an N64 controller, but wireless. It's kind of weird for them to try and put it into the modern format when it's like the console already has Bluetooth. Why would I buy that instead of just buying any of the other 8-bit dope Bluetooth or any other Bluetooth wireless controller option if I wanted a more modern format? Yeah, Um, I think the main thing is you you would have to map the buttons. Like well, if you're playing in 64 like, you... games, the, that other stick wouldn't do anything. There's no C buttons where the, a, you would have to use the ABC or AB YX for the yeah. C buttons. It's, do- it's doable. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, then just, the... it's just one of those things where it's like, they deliberately partnered with eight bit dough to do this for this console. Why not go all the way and make it look like an N64 three prong controller. That's the, that's the weird part to me. Like this is a this is a special partnership, and even the console itself kind of looks like an N sixty four same format. So it's like, why make the controller more modern format? Yeah, I I don't know. I I like I my my thing is if they came out with a more modern looking N sixty four controller, I would say, why are you doing that? Nintendo makes the wireless one, and I could just buy a Nintendo I, I sixty four controller. I wonder if that works. I wonder if that does. If that Nintendo sixty four, I would assume will work so. With this, it, it it just does over. I think it's just Bluetooth. Is is it just open Bluetooth? Those the Nintendo controllers. I I, I want to say because I mean the Pro controllers and stuff all work on everything else. They're all Bluetooth. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe that's the way to go. But are those still for sale? Or are they? I feel yeah, like that's the only thing to jump I, through for that. Like, I, my, my final piece on this is. I don't know Apito products super well, but I would assume that it must be some sort of either specifically they didn't want to copy the N64 controller or there's a design like they could yeah, possibly that's true. get sued I could see for that. it. Um, and I would, I would excuse thought. that. It's just I, I know Apito controllers a little bit and they sell a lot and this looks exactly like a lot of their controllers. It's just the button yeah. format is slightly different. That's why I was like, why partner if you're not going to make the same format? That's that's yeah. kind of my only qualms. Is the big thing here, in my opinion, the biggest fucking thing. Will, how much is the analog pocket? I want to say it's three ninety nine or two ninety nine. Sorry, two ninety nine. I pocket. I think you, I think you may be right. Uh, sorry, I should have looked this up first. No, I'm trying to go up uh, to the store. Same season, but store. now I got to go through all their fucking shit down to get to the price. It's two forty nine. That's not Will. bad. Analog pocket. No, that's fucking is, expensive. It's two twenty. <laughs> expensive as shh. Is it? I see it yeah. for two forty nine. But anyways, because like like I have something that is a Game Boy incredible screen. It's not as crazy as analog pocket. This is ninety nine percent of the analog pocket, and it's thirty bucks now. Oh, you're um, saying the analog pocket is also two forty nine. Yeah. Oh analog, yeah, no, analog, that's a lot. The analog 3D says it's 249. That Yeah, that's the that's thing is analog bad. analog shit is always way too expensive and I thought this would be like 400 minimum. The Same. fact that they're selling this for 250 is cheap, especially when no joke, if you go buy a used N64, median price, you're paying 100 bucks and then you have to buy like an Eon HDMI adapter, which is probably your your best option without actually modding the console. That's 150 bucks. So middle of the road without looking for deals or anything, you're paying 250 for an N64 with HDMI output. Or you can just pay 250 for this, which is doing a full 4K. And mm-hmm. through mods, we'll eventually read off an SD card with ROMs. So this deal's incredible. I don't play enough of the N64 to buy this, especially since I have an N64 with an Eon. It would make more sense for me to just get the cart. Although, but I don't have an HDMI out on that. 
I don't need this. I don't need this. <laughs> Will, you're getting this, though. We know you're uh, getting this. Yeah, I set a reminder for the date that it's going on sale. I think, honestly, if I get this, I think I might sell my pocket. Um, I, I don't, yeah, fuck, I fuck don't the use, pocket. I don't use the pocket enough. Um, I the Mew Mini can play Game Boy games, and my Game Boys can play Game Boy games on my Evercarts. Um, so I think swapping two forty nine for two forty nine, uh, is is the best. That deal makes there. sense. Question is, do I get the black or do I get the white? And I kind of want to get the white, but I don't want the it to get dirty. Is sleek. No, the, but black, the black is, is sleek. classic N sixty four. I know that's, that's the, the other thing. problem. So. Yeah, I think, and on top of that, eventually this N64 will be able to play, do most of the FPGA cores. Um, who knows yeah. how much it can do? So that'll be that'll probably turn into the main console where I'll be like, hey, let's play a Super Nintendo game. Let's play N64. Let's play whatever. So um, yeah, also looking forward to that part. So and then maybe yeah. you can get rid of all your consoles, Will. I mean, well, let's not go that far. Yeah, let's not be crazy. Right after we get rid of all your pots and pans karen all your cast iron <laughs> jesus. <laughs> jesus christ um you mean the things got... i use on a regular basis and not the things i leave in storage you don't in the closet them. i take out the consoles and pet them at least once, once a, a year week. once a year that's uh, right uh let's close it out with some good news uh folks universal orlando's new harry potter and nintendo worlds have a release date may 22nd 2025 this is a brand new universal park called universal epic universe so similar to how uh disney world has magic kingdom animal kingdom hollywood studios etc this is a brand new full park it includes uh the ministry of magic from harry potter Ooh. it includes super nintendo world i believe there's a dark universe world uh and then there's a how to train your dragon world that's right, the dark universe, the the great set. <laughs> it's just it's, it's just Tom Cruise speeding, <laughs> or, or uh, it's Tom Cruise that trailer with no audio in it, except for Tom Cruise yeah. screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for this because I I've heard really good things about the Nintendo World stuff in um, LA and in Japan, and this will be much closer to me. So we will definitely have to yeah. be taking a trip down here Do sometime next year. Hell yeah. Hell a lot yeah. of fun. This will be exciting. Um, that's it for the news. Uh, we do have some content call out. Will, have you seen this thing called Big Box DB? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, oh it'd be so good because this is made for you, you sicko. This is <laughs> exactly what you need. Uh, t tell us what this is uh big box db is literally uh you know pc games used to come in big bulky boxes like all these ones behind me uh that you can't see uh they yeah. um scan them all and you can just look at them in uh 3d and it's fucking sweet <laughs> yeah it's just a shelf of 3d boxes and you click on them like I'm looking at the one for Ultima Trilogy 1, 2, and 3. And then you can drag oh, wow. rotate the box and look at the back of the box. Oh, this one. $10 yeah. off. Age of Empires. <gasps> Windows, Windows 3.1 um, box. I remember that. So oh, when I first yes. discovered this, um, probably 20, 30 years ago, uh, when it first came out. No, uh, whenever I first found this, uh, I did the cool thing, which was print out mini versions of games that I like. And I... I oh, that's folded cool. and taped the boxes together um, because it's much cooler than owning the originals. Um, yeah. So, for sure. yeah, the site's awesome. I don't know if, honestly, I don't know if it was the site that I took these from, but one of these sites that does this, um, you can grab all four and print them out and fold it. So. God, I remember all, all, having a lot of these games like 3D Ultra Mini Golf. Yeah, good stuff here. Uh, the other content call out will, I don't know if you've seen this one, but somebody on Twitter called Luke, the maker L U K E, uh, is making a working LX console. <laughs> There's different ways. This, look, your brother has a misspelled <laughs> name. Okay. Why don't you talk about yeah, your brother is your brother's Z A C. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you spell Zach. I have to remember. I have to remember that your brother is like the correct wrong spelling because he at least has a like a valid explanation, which is it's it is the first three letters of Zachariah, whereas Save Data Zach is Z-A-K, which is the wrong incorrect spell. But he's <laughs> named after the main character from Fusion Frenzy, Zach. Oh, no, he's Bill not. Gates. Uh, <laughs> anyway, there's somebody who is 3D printing and making a working LX console, which is the the fictional console from UFO 50, and they have it running now. I'm not sure exactly how they're doing it, but they they took uh, a lot of screenshots from the game and the fake promotional material. They 3D printed this around, put working in LED lights. I'm guessing they just probably have a tablet or a cheap screen running UFO 50. They made their own controllers that plug in via some DIN ports. So they're actually putting a lot of work into this, and they finally got it running and working at least the first version and it's really cool they said they're going to release the 3d printed files at some point so i may i probably won't build a full one but i'll at least build a small one with a little screen probably just cycling through the games this is really cool hell yeah i'm into it yeah that's luke the maker l-u-k-e <laughs> very cool <laughs> how else sorry you different from luke? l-u-c luke besson that's french Jean-Luc? that doesn't count yeah, Jean-Luc, L-U-C. Listen. How about you, L-U-C, my balls? <laughs> <laughs> Take us out of here. <laughs> Folks, uh, thanks so much for being here. Karen, thank you so much for being here. Um, you hate me, but you, you decided to come on here anyways, which means a lot to me. Um, yes. Ian, uh, you're a trash fire and I hate you. Um, Thank you. You'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern. Check him out. Uh, he's playing Las Vegas, New Vegas again. <laughs> he's starting <laughs> over. He's actually playing the game backwards this time. I'm really excited for that. Um, now, we'll be back this weekend. I think Sunday night is when we're going to do uh, some uh, spooky pixel. I got to set all that back up, but uh, it'll be $1 to change between the games, and we'll do some other fun stuff for that. So come check that out. Subpixelfilms.com is where you can go to check out all of our cool content. I've been your host, Will Crosby. Thank you so much for being here. I miss you all, and I love you. And don't forget, I am always behind you. See you next time. Bye. Bye.